I will be reading from Numbers chapter 14, from verse 1 to 12, as our lead text, and then we can move from there. This looks like it's a new pulpit or a different kind of pulpit, uh, so I'm still finding my, my bearing here, as I think I have. So let me read from Numbers chapter 14. I read from the INIV. It says uh, from verse 1, <clears throat> That night all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children would be taken as plundered. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? <clears throat> and they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell, fell face, forward, face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephne, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israeli, Israelite assembly, the land we pass through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give us to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid. Verse 10. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? <clears throat> in spite of all the signs I've performed among them. I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them but I'll make you into a nation greater and stronger than they. Naomba maji ya muhubiri. Asante. I bring you best wishes from the International Community Christian Church in the city of Memphis, where right now I'm the interim senior pastor. Um... I, th I think most of you know me. Doesn't it? Who doesn't know me? Show me. Then I introduce myself. <laughs> Maybe there are new people who don't know me. Okay. I think most of you. A few people don't know me? Ah, okay. Yeah. We can meet after tea and then we'll get to know. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to know one another. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm an old timer here. Uh, I guess uh, that's why they say, like, oh, he needs no introduction. <clears throat> Our read text in, uh, in, in uh, the Numbers chapter 14 is, uh, is about the 12 spies that Moses said to explore the land that God had promised the children of Israel. He wanted them to go ahead of them so that they can look at the land. Actually, it is the people who requested. They were actually at the age, the age of entering the land. And they asked, can you select some people to go and look at the land and then come back and tell us maybe which way we go? Uh, that's a, a preaching for another day. But uh, that is how they, it came to be that they sent spies. We don't know whether they were doubting or whatever it was, but they did send 12 spies to look at the land. And uh, we are at that point where these 12 spies are bringing in their report. Uh, it's a long story. If you want to capture it, it's recaptured in chapter 1 of Deuteronomy, where Moses actually gives again the summary of what happened. But you also get this, uh, this story in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. Oh. Okay, this is a better one. It was. Increase something here. Thank you. So, the... Um, you get the whole story if you read chapter 13 and 14. 
But I, 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 thought, I, I decided to start with this part where you can imagine the whole number of people, the many, the multitude, all of them crying the whole night. The Bible says that they cried the whole night after they received the report. And they, they cried because the report that they received frightened them out of the ten spies. And it is the way they reacted from the report that they received. And in life, as we face different challenges and as different opportunities come in front of us, we have a choice to confront them with faith or with fear. And this is the choice that confronted these people. They were either going to receive the report of the land, they were being told by God, go ahead and enter the land. And here they had a choice to go by faith or to go by fear. If we choose to live by fear, or those who live by fear, they miss out on the many blessings that God has for them. Because they always talk themselves out of the journey to the promised land. You notice that these, the, the, the group of the 12 spies split into two groups. A group of 10 and a group of 2. The group of 10 said, we went to the land and indeed it is a good land. There was no dispute. But they said, now they started giving their opinion. But we cannot be able to go in because the people are mightier than us. So we see that they have chosen a path of not believing that they can enter. They have chosen a path that it is not possible. And we are always being confronted by this choice. When we face a challenge or we face an opportunity, we can either go by faith or by fear. This is too difficult a course. I cannot be able to make it. Maybe you've been hearing since you are small. This is a difficult course. If you go to this and you select it to this course, this is difficult. So it's already engraved in your head. So when you are given that opportunity, you can either go by faith or by fear. If you, you go by fear, you will say, I have had all the days of my life. It is a very difficult course. So you will quit. You will not even try. But if you go by faith, you'd rather say, you will say, I'd rather fall forward. I'll go try it. I'll go try it. Because there are some who have done it and, 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 and finished. The same thing when we face challenges. You receive a report from the doctor. You can face that report by faith or by fear. And depending on how you face this, uh, this challenge, that will determine where you end. That will determine the destiny or the destination you will reach. Whether you choose to go by faith or by fear, that decides where you will go. Remember these two groups, the 10 spies and the two spies. Both reported the same information. They, they had the same facts. They saw the land. They all said it was good. And even both the 10 and the two spies, they said, indeed, we saw the Anakims, the giants. These were a, 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 a descendants of giants. And, and indeed, it is true that both groups saw them. But we see the group of two say, let us go at once and possess the land. They did not even want to enter into an argument. They already believed the report, that they, that they, the promise that God had given them. And they were ready to go in spite of knowing that they were actually giants. So there was no dispute about the facts. It is how you actually decide to do with the facts. The report has come from the doctor. There is no dispute about the lab report. But how you face it, how you confront it, saying, I'm finished, you are actually finished. But if you say, I will face this by faith, God will pass me through, immediately you start making calls. Because you did not let that report devastate you and finish you off immediately. And as soon as you start making calls, you get recommendations, you get suggestions, you, you, you get people praying for you. And as soon as you start seeing recovery, you start seeing the light, 
as God is working through people. Those people, he want to connect you to get you the answer. Because God works through people. So whatever you are facing today, I can tell you, where you will end depends on whether you are going to face it with faith or with fear. Because we see these people, the ten said, we, we don't even try. Don't even try. Those people, we saw them, they're just going. They even exaggerated and they said, that land, they spoke with two, the two sides of the mouth. They said it's a very good land. And then they said the land devours those who live in it. How can you say it's a good land and then you say it destroys the people who live there, which was actually a lie. They started putting things, and that's why the Bible calls it a bad report. Because after they saw the facts, which were not in dispute, they now started making a commentary and giving an opinion. And they were just trying to gin out the fear. And that's why the whole multitude of the children of Israel, they cried. Grown-up men and women were crying throughout the night. Saying, why did God bring us with our children here to destroy us? Why did, is God playing tricks on us? Why didn't he leave us in, in Egypt? And that's why you find in the, in, the, in the Bible, the Bible says they poured contempt on him. How could they say that he brought them to play tricks on them? How could they say that he brought them so that he can destroy them in, in the desert? How could they say that the God who had fought them for them in Egypt and brought them with provision in the desert was actually playing tricks on them. If you helped someone, you took someone from the street and you helped him. And then later on, he says you just took them to, 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 to kind of uh, take advantage of them. You will not even have words to express yourself. You say, this person has poured contempt on me. And that's what the Bible says. The Lord was so angry that they poured contempt on him, saying, God brought us from Egypt to destroy us. So these people are able to use words. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And fear also comes by hearing. They were able to generate so much fear that grown-up women and men were crying throughout the night. They were frightened. They even started accusing God that he was playing tricks on them. He had laid a trap. He brought them all the way to bring them here and finish them with their children. If you are guided by fear, you will give up easily. The, the, the English, the British have a saying, faint heart never won a fair lady. If you are a young man who is looking for a bride to marry, and you are faint hearted, you are driven by fear. All the beautiful ladies who pass by, but you are so afraid, you will not be able even to propose to one of them. You just be admiring them, but you are so faint hearted, you are driven by fear. Faint heart never won a fair lady. And it's the same whenever you confront opportunities, like all these ladies passing through you. These are opportunities for a young man who is looking for a bride. But he's so fearful, he's petrified, he's literally shaking. And uh, they are, the lady is actually waiting for you to, to invite them for coffee. And that's the same. Whenever we confront big issues, sometimes we become faint heart. You say, no, that is not for me. Our family cannot be able to do that. Yeah. In our own family, nobody has, has never owned a business. No. It's for those people. It's for that tribe. You know that people of that tribe? They are the people who do those things. You are faint heart. You, you, you let the, the beautiful ladies are passing by, but you are, you are just petrified. You, you are just admire. If you live by faith, faith will take you farther than where your education can take you. Faith can take you where your family and friends can never take you. Faith can take you farther than where your natural abilities can take you. Faith is an additional credential, it's an additional degree on you. When you have faith, you can write it at the end of your name. 
comma, faith. As another degree. That will take you where even your other degrees will not take you. Because you apply where everybody else is afraid to apply. You send, you put in your application. Faith is a powerful vehicle. It's powerful. That's why Jesus said, if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, the smallest seed known to man, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to, be, to move and be thrown into the ocean. If you have been observing, you have seen people of faith in this congregation. People who have had mountains in front of them. As a pre one president used to say, only those who have eyes cannot see. But if you have been opening your eyes and looking at the people who have faith here, you have seen them move from a place to another place. Where their natural abilities, not their education, not their family background, it is God who has moved them from where they were to where they are. You are all, we are all Bibles to be read. Our lives reflect the truth of the, God, of the gospel, of what God has done in us. As we look at one another, we see the work of God in each one of us. As we go, see God helping us. From our, in our own weaknesses, he's helping us. Strengthening us and causing us to excel. Only those who have no eyes, only those who don't observe have not seen. Faith is powerful because it tells you to go on. It tells you to go on. You see, these two spies were saying, it is true. The people out there, when you look at yourself, not them looking at you, when you look at yourself and look at them, you actually feel like you're an insect, a grasshopper. So, so there was no dispute about the fact. These people were huge. But faith tells you it doesn't matter. He says, let us go at once and possess the land, for we are well able. Imagine someone so small looking up and saying, we are well able. But as we will see later, we will see the reason he was able to say that. Faith is powerful because it tells you to go on. You see, faith, faith does not look at what I heard. It tells you to go on. It tells you to go on. Not because of what you are seeing, but because of the, the power that is driving you to go. On the other side, fear tells you it is too difficult. Don't even try. These people said, we can't go. They told the children of Israel, we can't even try. We can't even go. They didn't say, let's try. They said, no, we can't even try. And fear will tell you, don't even try. With the faith, you aim to travel to the sun but you land in the moon. In the meantime, the fearful person is you down here analyzing how hot it is to go to the sun. In the meantime, you are digging rocks on the moon to bring them down here for scientific study. The, guy, the fearful guy is you analyzing. Is you calculating. I, I was talking to one of my relatives yesterday. <coughs> she was saying, let us help this one of our children to build his own house. And she said, I'm going to call my whole household so that we meet and discuss this. I said, a lot of things go when you start calling meetings. A lot of things, ideas get wasted when you start calling meetings. I said, why don't you just call one of your daughters? Make a call. Say, I have this idea. I want to build a house for this son. Call the other daughter. Tell them, I have already made a decision. Tell them, how much are you going to put in? You take the idea to the meeting, they all say, oh, you know what he has been doing? You see, now they even get lost like these guys. They start bringing, going off a tangent. They say, oh, they get lost in the forest. Oh, you know what he has done before. Uh, now the idea of helping him gets lost in the meeting. But a person of faith moves on 
and he starts gathering the materials as he moves on. This is a person, and actually we did it right there, right there when we were sitting. We said, okay, you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? How much are you going to contribute? And we said, go ahead and start it. And that is what faith does. Faith tells you to move on. You don't have to have everything in hand. Faith tells you, start the journey. Move on. That's why uh, Joshua and Caleb said, let us move on. Let us go and possess the land. It is when you start actually moving on. You see, faith is like these open doors that open themselves, op automatic doors. It is actually when you come to the door that it opens itself. In the meantime, if you say that door is locked and you don't move on, the door will never open. It is actually when you move towards the door and actually the door opens automatically. Faith does not look at what is ahead. You actually take the step and the other steps take care of themselves. I hope I'm talking to someone. Fear tells you it is too difficult. You don't even try. This is story of the children of Israel and the 12 spies is a story of how God sends his blessing to us. God was just giving a, them a, a kind of a view of what he was going to give them and giving them the opportunity to decide whether they are going to take possession of it. The blessing was already there. It was a question of where they were and where the blessing was. Were they going to take the step by faith in spite of what he was saying? Both groups had the same facts. These people, the 10 reported that emphasized about the difficulties that were there. And fear led to rebellion. You see, fear will cause you to do the wrong thing. If you're led by fear, it will lead you to rebellion. Because faith is believing that what God has said will happen. Fear is saying what God has said will not happen. That's what that actually happened in this story. These guys were saying whatever God had said, it's not going to happen. Because God had said, go possess the land. In fact, before they sent the spies, God had said, go possess the land. The whole thing of sending the spies was the people came to Moses and said, why don't we send spies? They were actually creating the premise for doubt. So they, were, they, they gained this fear in the people. They said, we can't go. But the two say, let us go at once. For we are well able to overcome it. Which report would you believe? There are the two people, and there is the ten, the majority. The majority are telling you, the God who took you from Egypt, the God who has provided for you in the desert, he has told you to go take the land, but they tell you, no, it's not going to be done. It can't be done. And then there is the minority, the two people. They can hardly raise their voice. It is being drowned by the ten. They say, we are well able. They are not even able to, they can't even articulate, they are not even able to argue against this group. They just state by faith. We are well able. If you could ask them, how, how do you know? They might not even be able to articulate. But by faith, they receive the word of God, they believe the report of the Lord. They said, if God has said it, it is going to be. That's actually why they said, because they actually believe, they actually agreed with the other ten, that these were giants. You can't defeat them on your own. But they said we are well able to go in. Sometimes when you analyze the situation and the numbers and everything and the reports, they say it can't be done. But when God comes to you and he has promised you and he's empowering you, then you can say I'm well able to cross this river. I'm able to face this mountain. I'm able to take advantage of this opportunity. At that time, you are being tested. Are you going to go by fear or by faith? And I want to tell you whatever you are facing today, you have a choice. Are you going to face it by fear or by faith? That will make the difference. That will make the difference today. It is when we start trying to figure out how it's going to happen. 
Remember God had said, go in and possess the land. What they should have done is actually to start walking towards the land. And God would have taken care of the situation. If you read your Bible, you will see that God never discussed the problems. Read your Bible again. He told them, go. God already knew about the giants. God already knew about the Jordan River. God already knew whatever they were, was ahead of them. But he never discussed it. He had already provided the solution for it. He wanted them to focus on the goal, to focus on the promise, to focus on the blessing. Because it is when we look at the problem, that the problem becomes a mountain, we cannot even be able to see God. But when we focus at the blessing, we actually see God in the blessing. And as we walk, they actually the problems melt away. Jordan literally melted in front of the people of God. The, the Red Sea literally melted in front of the people of God. God never discussed the problem they were going to face, the obstacles. He discussed the promise. Because already in the blessing, in the promise, there was a provision. There was a provision. There was a means. There was a vehicle that would carry them to the, to the blessing. If only you can catch that. That whatever God has promised you, whatever door has, God has opened for you, he has already made the vehicle already that will take you there. You ask us to take the step of faith. These people are right at the edge of the promised land. And God them go take possess the land. Then they started, oh, let's, let's send some people to check it out. As soon as you start now analyzing and doubting, and the, listening to people who say it's too difficult, it can't be done, so and so tried and he failed. Then you are right at the edge. God is telling you, go ahead and take. And you are spending time trying to create room for doubt. Saying, let us check it again. It is when we try to figure out how the answer will be given. That's what happened to Abraham. It is when he started trying to figure out. He said, I'm old. And it is known from science. When you are old, you cannot have children. And he knew some science, maybe even those days. He said, no. It is when you actually try to figure out how God will achieve the promise he gave. That's actually when you started making the mistake. When God has given you a promise, when God has opened a door, when you try to figure out, you are in first year at the university, and you start worrying about the final exam, you will actually drop out in the first year. Because they will tell you that exam, many people have failed. You will give up in the first year. See? He said, many people, only 20% pass that exam, that professional exam. And you will give up before you even start. There is an exam I did six times. And I passed the sixth time. And my wife asked you, me, you used to ask me, how long are you going to try? I, I told her I would try ten times. And I passed the sixth time. So, it is actually when you try to figure out, how is God, God going to give me this, to re help me reach the goal? That is actually when you start getting into problems. And that's why the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Because when you try to analyze, some of the things you are facing are too complex even for you to analyze. You receive a lab report you try to read. You can't even understand the, 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 the words they are writing there, what they found. You try to read, you can't even know what they, they are writing. Even the doctor explains to you and you can't even understand. It is when now you try to analyze and try to see how is God, God going to deliver me from this problem. That's actually when you start making the mistake. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You read about these two spies, specifically about Caleb, 
God speaks and says, he, he followed uh, he followed my he, he followed me with his whole heart. That's why he was, they were not concerned about how God is going to do it. They had put their trust in God. You actually read very much more that God is talking about Caleb. For some reason, he's not mentioning Joshua. And it is when God was so disappointed with the people, and he said even Moses was not going to enter the land, that he said even Joshua, who is going to take from you, will go in. It is, it is when you walk with people of faith. Joshua appears to have been blessed because of walking with Caleb. Because he said only Caleb will inherit, but we see Joshua also going in. Everybody who was 20 years and above was not allowed to go in. Because these were people who had seen God's work and doubted God. He said only the kids, the children who never saw what I did are going to inherit the land. You people who have doubted me, saying I will finish you in the desert, you get what you prayed for. Read the Bible. That's what the Bible says. You actually say that I'm praying tricks on you. What you said is going to happen to you, it's going to happen to you. You will not enter the land. You read in, in um, Psalm 78, where the, the God is so disappointed with the children of Israel, he say, these people who saw my power, those people who saw my miracles, these people who have experienced my blessing, limited me. It is when we limit God, when we walk by fear, thinking that what God has given us, the doors that God has given us, are not going to be completed. That is when we limit him, and he gets so disappointed. He says, haven't you seen you how far I've taken you? Haven't you seen, it? Who, who is here who has never seen the hand of God? Show me by your hand. You've never seen God help you in anything. And even if, if he has helped you even in something small, why don't you believe him? That the same God who helped you in that small thing is going to help you in the big things that you're facing. I want to, your faith to rise up. I want you to shed all the fear. Knowing that the door that God has opened for you, knowing that the mountain is in front of you, that if you confront it with faith, as you move towards it, it will melt in front of you. Because God has already made provision. You can stay up throughout the night trying to figure out how it's going to be done. But you will not find the solution. Some of the things we face are so complex. You try to figure it out, you can't. But God is able to bring out together whatever you need. He's able to bring, it's when we are, we are singing here about God who cannot be defeated. And my eyes were going to the various issues that are ahead of me. Issues where even if I do all the analysis I want to do, I cannot find all the answers. But I was looking at them with the eyes of prayer. As we were singing, I looked at that, I looked at that, I looked at that. And I don't know how God will bring everything together. But I can tell you that God will. God has already put together. That's why he never talked about the giants. He knew who were there. He knew who was sitting in the land. But he said, I've given you that land. Go take it. And I want to tell you, whatever doors God has opened you, move by faith and start doing whatever you need to do. Because God uses what you have. God starts with whatever you have in your hands. Just look around. See the idea God is giving you. See the people God, you, God has been giving you to talk to. Get a quickening. Get that connection that God is now talking. And take action. And you'll be surprised. When David was confronted by the giant, one of the Anakims, he confronted and said, you come with a spear and a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord. Do you think it is the stone that killed the giant? It is actually the power that came backing the stone. It came like a granite. 
the power of God translated a small stone picked from the river. He put so much power in it, it was like a grenade. By the time it hit that guy, it was so powerful, it knocked him off dead. Remember the story of Samson, confronted by the armies of the Philistines. He picked a jaw of a donkey, just somewhere there. And with that, he was able to destroy a thousand men. God is going to use whatever you have to do whatever needs to be done. Because you might be looking for something big as a starting, as a seed to start the action. But just look around and get a quickening. Let God speak to you. Let God show you the jewel of a donkey just around in your house. Just in the junkyard, let God, God show you the jewel of a donkey and pick it. And it will help you to slay whatever it is that's ahead of you. Because it's not what you have. That's why Caleb is saying we are well able. How could he, someone who looks like a grasshopper, say he's going to face this guy? How can he say I'm well able? You would say, oh, you, you, you're just uh, arrogant. But he was not being arrogant. He knew the power that was behind him. He knew the power that had promised. It is the relationship we have with God that causes us to say, I'm well able. Because I know if God has opened a door for me, it doesn't matter who is in front of me. It, it doesn't matter who is interviewing me. They might all try to reduce my points. But finally, God in his own way will give me the points. I'll finish with the story. A long time ago, when I was going to college, I, I qualified for a scholarship. Or I qualified for an interview for a scholarship. You couldn't do the course I was doing without a scholarship, actually. You had to get someone to pay a scholarship for you. So I went and I failed. You see, I have, I have known failure. Like I failed an exam six times. So I went to this very unique interview for a scholarship. And actually, you are invited. Both the person who gave you the scholarship and yourself, you are invited and made, made to, to get together. So I... I went and I failed. So I went back home and I, I started doing, looking for other plans to go and do some other things. But strange, strange, strange. One of the other organizations for which I had not interviewed, out of a strange reason, they increased the number of candidates they wanted. And lo and behold, who was called for that interview? It was me. God, in his own way, he created a space for me uh, out of the blue, if you want to call it. So God is able to, if he opens the door, he can do whatever he wants. And, and sometimes maybe he was just trying to teach me a lesson. Not to think because I was very smart, I am the one who has won. Because I had actually failed. I had failed. God actually just helped me out. So that's why I'm saying I can, I'm well able. But not in my name, but in the name of the Lord. You come with a spear and a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord. It's actually God who did it. Because it was not because I was so, so good at the interview. I had actually failed. But God helped me. You are either going to face whatever you are facing by faith or by fear. If you are going to trust the God who is with you, go by faith, not in your own name, but in the faith of the God who is with you. Following the Lord wholeheartedly, like Caleb. So that you can tell him, I go to God through that door in your name. Fear will tell you, don't even try. The man who invented the bulb tried a thousand times. And in the thousand time is when he succeeded. Otherwise, we would all be in the dark. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your word which has enlightened us this morning. That we can go by faith or by fear. We go by faith not just as mere positive thinking, but faith in God who is able to back us up, to back the literal that we have in our hands to accomplish that which needs to be accomplished. 
We thank you, Lord, because our faith has been lifted up. We have been inspired by your word. And I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will strengthen every person who has had this word. That you will seal that word in their hearts. That it will cause them, Lord, to arise in the strength of God. And that they will say, whatever comes to me, I come in the name of the Lord. I pray that those who are unwell, Lord, you will heal them today. I pray that the healing touch of Christ, the spirit of healing, to sweep through this congregation this, uh, this morning. Touching everybody from the hair to the toes of our feet. Bring health and healing. Not only us, Lord, we pray. We stand at the altar of the Almighty God, praying for the members of our families, those who are far and wide, that God, the same blessing you have sent us this morning, that you will extend it to them. We stand at your altar praying that you may extend healing to the members of our families who are in far places, God. It is because of that relationship we have with you that we are able to say, I come in the name of the Lord. And because you know us and because we are in your hands, you back us up. Maybe you are out there and you are saying, how can I go by faith in a God of whom I'm not connected, of whom I have an old relationship? If you want to have that confidence, that you can go in the name of the Lord. You need to be joined to that Lord. I therefore want to give you an opportunity if you're out there. You have not been joined to the Lord. You have not committed your life to him. So that you can actually be able to walk by faith saying, I go wherever I'm going. I face whatever I'm facing in the name of the Lord. Because it's only when you are joined together that you can speak in his name. Are you there? Would you like to pray me to pray with you that you may be joined with that Lord so that you can face life by faith in the power of that Lord? Are you there? Would you like to, me to pray with you? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless us, Lord, with all blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.